Hi everyone, my name is Eleanor, and as this is the first time I am recording a commentary to go along with one of my time lapses, I suppose I should say welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, today, I'm just going to be sitting and, well, I suppose right now I'm currently watching the video with you. Um, I'm not going to talk for the entire time, but I thought it might be a bit interesting, a bit different if I actually spoke about some of the things I'm doing in my paintings. I've done quite a few time lapses now, so I thought I might spice it up a bit. At the moment, it's pretty self-explanatory. I always like to block in all the colours that I'm going to be working with before I get to any actual painting. So what I'll do is I'll fill in each colour and where all the lights change, where the shadows are. I'll do all of that beforehand before I do any kind of blending. Well, generally. Sometimes I get tired of doing that and I will start blending some of it before I, I finish blocking everything in, which was the case with this one, if I remember rightly, because this was probably the most difficult painting I have ever done. And that's mostly because there was so much going on the entire time. I affectionately dubbed it the painting that never ended because it honestly just seemed to go on forever. So, luckily for you and for me watching this back now, um, I've sped it up a lot. So, what you see here compressed into 15 minutes is hours and hours of what what amounts to the final product this was a massive undertaking i mean i'm i'm usually only ever painting one person at a time uh i don't think i've ever no i have i have done a few i've done a few kind of double portraits for the Versailles fandom before but this was the first time doing such a complicated one because as you can see there's a lot of shadow both Jamie and Clara looking at the camera Jamie's hair did my head in I hope you won't be able to tell when you get to it but it did so this was definitely the most difficult painting I think I've ever done and I honestly questioned why I, why I have this as a hobby several times during, during the painting of this, but I'm glad I persevered. As you can, as you can tell, it took a long time <laughs> to block in a lot of this one, um, because there was just so much individual colour, uh, like spots of colour and changes and shadows so that that took a, a long while I thought this might be a pertinent portrait to to start doing a bit of commentary on. I mean, I'm completely new to this, I've never done this before. As I said, there was so much that went into it, I think it might be useful for my audience and even me <laughs> to reflect on it a little bit, you know. So, as I said, you can already tell that I started blending before I even finished blocking everything in. That's honestly just because sometimes you just need to do something different to keep yourself engaged because it gets rather tiring blocking everything in um, without seeing much of a product. So I did start to blend before I finished um, laying down all the colours. But you know, it's digital art, it's fine. <laughs> you can do that. 
I can't remember when I started blocking in colours before getting onto the main, you know, meat of the painting. I don't think I always did it like that. I don't think I always did it like that. But I've definitely found that it's a very useful way of building up a painting because if you have that base layer of colour, even if you don't blend or add to every single inch of painting, you have that foundation which will make it so much easier to build up and blend onto, uh, especially in a programme like Rebel, because when you're constantly blending, you, you don't want to be blending the colours which are underneath it if they're not the right colour, which I have had happen before, so if you lay down a colour that won't interfere with what needs to be on top of it, it really makes it useful in the long run. Something I found um, different in painting this to what I've been painting more recently is that the skin turned out a lot different to how I expected it to. I'm not really going for a very hyper-realistic look anymore, but when I started blending the skin I just rolled with it and it ended up looking... I'm really proud of the skin. <laughs> I think it would be blowing my own horn a bit too much if I'm like, yeah, that's really good. But um, I'm really proud of the skin. I, I'm proud of the texture I managed to get out of that because it's not usually what I tend to aim for when I'm painting. But that really blended effect seemed to just work for this this painting. So I kept it. I did add more pink to their skin tone than what was present in the original reference image. I did add some more pink in the cheeks because I... F it's artistic license, you don't have to completely copy a photo. I think it made... it just added a nice pop of colour, you know. So I did add more pink into the skin, into the cheeks, than what was in the original photo. Uh, and I think it worked. <laughs> I think it did help to bring the painting a little bit more life because a lot of the colours are very much the same and you don't want the painting, I mean, completely depending on your style, obviously, but this wasn't a, a painting I wanted to look very flat or monotone, so adding that bit of pink really, really worked for me on that, on that front. Something that I think most people would notice if they watch more than one of my time lapses is that I tend to jump around a lot with what I'm painting at any one point. And again, uh, like I said, I don't like working on one thing for a long time. I like to keep it fresh as it is. I like to jump around and go back and forth between things and keep building things up. It keeps me motivated, I'd say. I don't think you can tell from this how much I was struggling to, to paint Jamie's hair, but trust me, it was very difficult. And there were so many textures going on with this painting. That's why it was such a, such a difficult piece compared to what I'm used to. I mean, in essence, when you look at it, it's not a very it doesn't seem like a very difficult painting, but when you actually sit down and break it down, um, there are a lot of individual things that built up to make the entire picture, which was quite hard to capture, and especially with a style like mine, where you're not necessarily trying to go for hyper-realism to capture all those textures. I think if I was more skilled, it would have... <laughs> it would have turned out differently, 
but it was definitely a challenge. Obviously, it's good to challenge yourself, but it did make me want to quit painting several times. Jamie's facial hair definitely was quite difficult to capture in, well, just in general, a mixture of because of my style, how I like to paint, and also just because it was quite difficult. I did have to go back to that quite a few times, keep layering it up, keep building it up. I think that I do go back and do it again, even after this point. So it was definitely trial and error a lot throughout this painting. Yeah, there I go. It was it was difficult to get that fine line between making it too prominent and making it too light. And that particular kind of facial hair can be quite difficult to achieve when you don't want to put pinpoint accuracy into a painting. If you if you do want to keep it a little looser, that's just me. I mean, someone else could find that very easy, but I personally had a hard time with that. Just Jamie's hair in general was very difficult. Claire wasn't too bad. Claire, I mean, the back of Claire's hair, um, it was fiddly, but it wasn't too, too difficult because I'm far more used to painting hair like Claire's. If you've seen my other paintings, you can probably see familiarities in how I've painted her hair versus the other things I've done but Jamie's was was definitely a learning curve I'm glad I'm glad I did it I'm glad I persevered but my god was it torture at the time What did surprise me with this is that, unlike usual, because hands are usually very, very not fun to paint, Claire's hand here wasn't too bad. But there was some strategic cropping undertaken in the original image to make it so I didn't have to paint more of her hand. So there is strategic cropping in place to make this a little tiny bit easier for me, because as you have probably already guessed it was difficult enough as it is so if I painted the full image I think I would have quit <laughs> um, so I did make that a little bit easier for myself but by this point by this point it wasn't too bad you know I was just finishing blending the last bits just looking for things I needed to fix because I am when it comes to my paintings I'm a notorious perfectionist and it's very easy to get lost in trying to find things and you think you found everything but then you'll scroll a little bit to the left and you'll find something else that you didn't do right or doesn't look good enough in, in your eyes. When you post it it's probably such a small thing that pe other people probably wouldn't even notice but you know it and you know it's there so you want to fix it but then if you do that you spend you could spend hours just fixing tiny mistakes. So definitely don't recommend that method. It's something that I'm trying to work on. And I, I did do it with this painting. You can see that I'm just finishing off the last parts now. But it, I did have to sit down at one point and be like, this is done. I'm not doing it anymore because it did, it did get a bit, a bit overwhelming. If you're still here, thank you so much for listening and watching. It's 
definitely be more of a 50 minute ramble than I think a fluent, coherent commentary, but it's definitely been an interesting experience. If there's anything you'd like me to specifically address or talk about in a future in a future video then please by all means leave a comment or anything like that maybe leave a like uh, and even subscribe if you'd like to see more of my art I have other time-lapse videos like this I have more I have more that I have planned it would really mean a lot to me if you stuck around I hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much again and I will see you next time.